Hey, it's time to talk about elasticity. All right, this is the micro concept. You understand elasticity, elastic, inelastic demand, elasticity of supply, cross price of income elasticity. You're gonna simplify it. Just take a look. It looks all scary. Oh, I can't learn this. It's gonna be easy. Just pay attention. Here's the concept. First, let's start with the easiest one: elasticity of demand. Price goes up, coin demand goes down. We know the idea of the law of demand, okay? But the question is how much? If the price goes up, how much does quantity go down? By a lot or by a little, right? That's the idea here. The first one we're going to call, right here, you got this demand curve here, this one. This is inelastic demand. Inelastic demand means when there's a price change, quantity is very insensitive, right? Inelastic, insensitive to a change in price. So price goes up, like a whole lot, price goes up, Quantity decreases, but just a little bit, right? The law of, law of demand applies, but the, the quantity doesn't increase by very much, right? That idea is inelastic demand. It goes the other direction, too. When the price falls a whole lot, quantity increases, but just by a little bit. Here's a perfect example, gasoline. When the price goes up for gasoline, people will buy a little bit less, but not a whole lot less. And so quantity is insensitive to a change in price, inelastic demand. Over here is called elastic demand, very sensitive to a change in price. Right? When the price goes up, even just a little bit, people are like, ah, I don't want to buy it at all. When the price goes down, people are like, oh, great sale, and they go buy a whole lot more. There you go. Elastic demand. Looks like this. Now, there's this thing called the elasticity coefficient. Don't freak out. It's a percent change in quantity divided by the percent change in price, and it pops out a number. That number tells you if a product's demand is elastic or inelastic. One of those two. Now, just by looking at the number, let's maybe understand a few things. First of all, this is going to pop out a negative number. Why? Well, because there's an inverse relationship between quantity and price. And so the number is always negative. Ignore that. Let's just do the absolute value. So let's say that the change in uh, price was 10%, and that led to a 10% change in quantity. Well, that would pop out a 1. 1 means it's something called unit elastic. Unit elastic has a coefficient of 1, and that demand curve would be a 45 degree angle that would look like that. That's what unit elastic looks like. All right? Now, what if there's a 10% change and that leads to, I don't know, a 50% change in quantity? So price goes up by 10% and 50% quantity falls, right? The quantity changes a whole lot. That's very sensitive to a change in price. This number is greater than one. It popped out a number greater when in this case five. And what is it? It's elastic. So any coefficient number that's popped out greater than one is going to be elastic all the way. So if there's a 10% change, it leads to a 1,000% you know, change in quantity, very sensitive to a change in price that's elastic. The demand curve is going to be super flat, right? Downward sloping, but flat. All right, now what happens if there's a 10% change in price, and that leads to only a 2% change in quantity? That is going to be inelastic. Inelastic is not very sensitive to a change in price, and that demand curve is going to be really steep. Now, sometimes you can actually get something called perfectly inelastic, which means that a change in price leads to no change in quantity. People are going to buy just the same amount. doesn't matter if price goes up, people buy the same amount, and that means that demand curve would be vertical. It would look like that. Price would go up, people buy the same amount. That would look like the demand for insulin. Right? You either get it or you die. So the price goes up, 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 people are going to still buy it. All right. Now it's time for elasticity of supply. Take a look. Let's say supply curve looks like this, another one looks like this. Which one is inelastic, which one is elastic? Well, this one looks like it is inelastic, and that's right. A change in price leads to only a small change in quantity, right? That's the idea, and that makes sense, right? The price goes up, you can't produce that much more, and the reason why, let's say this is electricity. What if our power plants are already at their full capacity? It takes time to increase quantity of electricity beyond some certain point. So the price goes up, you can't get any more quantity, supply looks like this. This is inelastic supply. Over here, when the price goes up for some things, supply can increase a whole lot more than that increase in price, right? Price goes up, supply is very sensitive, very flat supply curve. This one will be something that's easy to produce, right? Relatively easy to bust out. So like, I don't know, Super Bowl t-shirts, right? The price goes up for Super Bowl t-shirts, the companies go, oh crap, let's make a bunch of more Super, Super Bowl t-shirts, and they can turn around and produce those super quickly. The price goes up, supply increases rather rapidly. Now, of course, this depends on the time frame. In five minutes, you can't get that much output. In a week, you can get more, and it depends on the product. Now it's time for cross-price elasticity. It's a percent change in quantity of product A 
caused by the percent change in the price of a different product, product B. Now, these two products are related. They're either substitutes or complements. That's a concept. Let's say that uh, the price of one goes up 10%. Now notice, positive and negative matters now. Before it didn't matter, but now it matters. If the price goes up for one product by 10%, and that causes the other one to increase 10%, then these two things must be substitutes for each other. Why? Well, when the price goes up for one, people will go, you know what? I don't want to buy that one anymore. I want to go buy the other one. So if there's a positive number, these things are substitutes. The higher the number, the more substitutes they are. For example, the price goes up 10% and this goes up 50%, then that number is way over here. Those things are really, really close substitutes. Now, what if it happened the opposite? What if the price went up 10% and this caused the other one to decrease 10%? The quantity decreased. People say, ah, I'm not going to buy it. These two things must be complements for each other. The reason why they're complements is when the price goes up for one, people go, you know what, I'm not going to buy the other. So price goes up for cereal, people buy less milk. All right, those things are complements for each other. That's a concept. Now, what if it's zero? What if a 10% change here leads to no change here? Well, they're not related at all. They're not substitutes, they're not complements. They have no relationship, like guitars and, I don't know, tires. There's just no relationship. Time for income elasticity. Now, what do you think? It's not going to be price. It's not going to be price. It's going to be income. So if there's a 10% increase in the income for some product, and that leads to a 10% increase in quantity, notice these are positive numbers, that means these are going to be a normal good. A normal good means that the income goes up, people buy more of it, normal good. On the other hand, what if it caused the quantity to decrease? And this would pop out a negative number, that would mean this is inferior. All income elasticity is trying to tell you is if they're normal or inferior and how much. That's the concept, hopefully it makes sense to you, Till next time.